What should we shoot at? Just out to sea, then we won't hit anybody. I don't care if I don't shoot just now. It's your turn. I don't want to be selfish. You enjoy it so much. Maisie, are you afraid? No. I'll get a better pistol. There won't be any next holidays for me. I'm going away tomorrow. Where to? I don't know. My lawyers wrote to Mrs. Janet. I've got to be educated somewhere. In France, I think. Maisie, I'll... I'll never see you again. Of course you will. Sometime. Sometime. Perhaps it would have been better if you'd shot straight a moment ago. Dick, how stupid you are. And how selfish you are to wish I'd killed you. Think of all the trouble it would have caused me. What's the matter? A oh, mama, he's full of those cartridges. Won't he explode if he runs? I don't think so. Dick, I don't want my mama to blow up. Well, I'll be careful and keep him at a walk. Maisie, it'll be a long time before I see you again. We'll be grown up then. That'll be nice. I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. I don't seem to be able to pass any exams. But I can make awful caricatures of the masters. Then be an artist. That's what I'm going to be someday. All right. We'll both be artists someday and do great things. Maisie, you belong to me forever and ever. Yes, we belong forever. It's very nice. How did he get this far on a set of blades like that? <laughs> Is he deformed or a member of the blasted cavalry? Don't be too severe on the gentleman, Alf. His legs are not matched, but he don't smell of horses. He's what they call uh, a war correspondent. Uh, friends, Romans, critics, observe this hole in the seat of my breeches. It was worn through. It is not a bullet hole. Plus, it is the fruit of leisure rather than cowardice. Thank you. They're rather neat. That's sure the way I handle the critics, Dick. Oh, both. What's the matter, Rembrandt? A bit too quiet. Looks like trouble. Where the British Army is, there's always trouble. Are you sketching what I think you are? I am. One of these days, some of that work of yours will bring down upon you a wrath far more terrible than any so far exhibited by the ignorant, bigoted, and frequently unwashed natives of this arid country. Seasoned <laughs> soldier is surprised while bathing. Remember the picture of Michelangelo? All beginners copy it. Discussing this matter of art inside the square? No, not at all.
Maisie, the powder stings. Maisie. Here's something for Helda. Maisie. Maisie, darling. Behold the phenomenon. Here is a man, presumably human, who mentions the name of one woman only. Maisie. And I've seen a good deal of delirium. Maisie, too. something for stopping that fuzzy wuzzy in the square at Abu Hammond. Not at all. Good of you to have looked after me all this time. I don't know where I live in London, but if chance brings us to meet, we'll meet. Oh, we'll meet, Top. Where are you going from Cairo? Alexandria, Suez, Port Said, especially Port Said. Gonna make them all immortal with paint and canvas. Well, you're at Vespi. At Port Said, Madame Bina. <whistles> nice place. Oh, we're old friends. And Monsieur Bina was a pretty good painter once. Besides, it's cheap and colorful. He has inherited a fortune. It wouldn't do no harm to help me. No harm at all. Well, Celeste. My day as an artist has arrived, Celeste. That London awaits my great talents, that I have a city to loot. My congratulations. Oh, Thank you. Look. Now, keep this for me to go home to England with. Yes. And this for a celebration tonight. Oh, yes. Tonight, the British public recognizes my genius and high time. Champagne for everybody. Aye. Aye. May you have visions of heaven and put them in colors that will never know age. As you have done. I want to dance, Celeste, the best Zanzibar dance that money can buy. Of course, Monsieur Dickey will sketch. Monsieur Dickey is an artist, as I have been. And I want you. For my face. <laughs> is my degradation so tremendous? You cannot have it. No, but I'll pay. No. Everything is for sale in Port Said. Monsieur, you will have him. I was once an artist, even I. <laughs> Goodbye, Celeste. I must be going. So soon. Goodbye, my son. Monsieur Bina, I won't forget my old master. No, you will never forget. For in the end, Monsieur Dicky, <laughs> you will descend alive into hell, as I have descended. Here is your money, Monsieur. Oh, yes. Come in. 
Don't you ever wear any trousers? Rembrandt! <laughs> oh. It's good to see those knobbly knees again. Uh, don't get sentimental. <laughs> Say, we've got something to eat. I'm starving. Of course we have something to eat. Beaten. Oh, oh Beaton. Yes, Breakfast for two. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Why, well, beg your pardon. Hello, meet Mr. Binky. I'm delighted. I love you. I hear I'm a genius, huh? Apparently, they say you have a new way of drawing things. I have. You're wanted by half a dozen papers. Naturally. Who can account for the fathomless folly of the public? Well, they're remarkably sensible people. The subject of fits, if that's what you mean. You happen to be the object of the latest fit. Well, how do I look? Beautiful. Come in. Mr. Heldo, meet Mr. Beaton, my landlord. I'm happy to meet you, sir. And I'm happy to meet you, Beaton. Binky? I will not tolerate my dog being stolen. <laughs> Too late. Theft already completed. And how is the charming Madame Binar? Oh, I'm making money. Mm -hmm. And her gifted husband? Drunk. Are you still doing good work? Talk. I'm marvelous. Here. Let's see my studio. Come on, Binky. your skylight or your north light or whatever light you call it there's your bedroom mm, nicely furnished too what's that place st john's church after breakfast you can go there and pray to be delivered from the sin of arrogance You know, there's something about that goat that reminds me of you. I beg your pardon. No, please, don't be angry. I have a password. If it doesn't work, you're not the girl. I think I know the password. A mama? A mama. Then it's, it's Maisie. Big. Maisie. How in the world did you know me? I don't know. I've wanted this to happen for a very long time, Maisie. If it hadn't been for these goats. If it hadn't been me. <laughs> they would have thrown me to the lions. You'd forgotten me, of course. Men I've shot, I never forget. Let's sit down. I feel weak. I hope her mama never blew up. No, he lived to be a very old and dignified goat. And his manners improved. He gave up cartridges for vegetables. I'm glad. Maisie, tell me about yourself. I keep staring at the third finger of your left hand and then looking at you and thinking it can't be true. It's true. 
I live at St. John's Wood. There's a girl who lives with me. I paint very bad pictures and hope desperately to do better ones. We did keep our bargain, didn't we? Only we said we'd do great things. I haven't. We will. In the summer, I worked with Tommy in front. He said he could. I know. I worked with him once. He says there's no hope for me. He says that about all his pupils. They always go out and become famous. Dick, do you know what the time is? It's a quarter past three. I must run. I have an appointment with an art dealer who may take some of my things. Maisie, may I come to see you? I can't continue to depend on these goats. Of course. But will you come on Sunday? I paint madly all the week for fear I might suddenly die and never do my masterpiece. Yes, I understand. I'll wait and paint madly all the week. Good. 8 Elm Street. St. John's Wood. Mm -hmm. We'll have tea and argue about our work, and perhaps you can help me. I hope I can. <laughs> Goodbye, Dick. Goodbye, Maisie. Get back to your position. Did you miss me, Mr. Finkel? with this new god you've acquired. <laughs> How does success taste, Dick? Good. The lean years have passed, and I approve of these fat ones. So I see. Yes, I like the power, I like the fuss, and I like the fun. But above all, I like the money. I almost like the people who make the fuss and pay the money. Almost. Decent of you. Well, that'll be enough. Working fast, I see. Yes. Carefully, too. Oh, they sell. Which one of these is going to be in the magazine? This one. It's a fake. I was at El Madrid, and I was wounded. But I never looked like that. I looked like that. I know, I know. I was at El Madrid. I was proud to post for the first one, but you had to get me drunk for this. Here's your money. Ah, uh, keep your money. I wish I could give you your whiskey back. Maybe I could have looked at that picture again. Could the gentleman be right? Doesn't compare with break of day, does it? Well, I did him as well as I knew how. I drawed him and I redrawed him. And I tree-drawed him. And I put the living fear of death in his eyes. Oh, he isn't pretty, but he's all soldier and very much man. Modest fellow. Go on. Well, then the art manager of that abandoned paper said his subscribers wouldn't like it. It was brutal and coarse and violent. Man being naturally gentle when he's fighting for his life. Yes, wanted something more restful. So I, I took my last shot back. And behold the results. That's art. I put him in a nice red coat, and I cleaned his rifle. I shaved his chin, I washed his hands. Price, <laughs> thank heaven, twice as much as for the first sketch. Do you suppose you're going to give that thing out as your work? Why not? Man can't work forever. Man might have gone to a pub and gotten decently drunk. Uh, Dick, if you were only a mass of blathering vanity, I wouldn't mind. But when I find that you add to your vanity the tuppenny, halfpenny peak of a 12-year-old girl, I bestir myself in your behalf. Thus. Now, if you have any bad language to use, use it. You. You. Don't you know what cash means to a man who's always starved and sweated as I have? Well, now I've got it, I'll make the most of it. I thought it was a man. It's a child. Break of day. That blooming well made somebody a widow. It's like being through an old battle again, just to look at that horse. He does it too real, that artist. That's what I want. But Maisie, you hardly looked at the pictures. But the crowd, their faces. But Maisie. Jake, 
Don't talk now, please. I'll have tea and crumpets, please. Do you want the same, sir? Uh, I'm trying to taper off. Just the crumpets for me, please. Now I can talk, Dick. Do you know why I couldn't before? I think so. I was choked up with envy. Oh, what a thing to have come to you. Success. Well, it didn't exactly come to me. I had to go out and look for it. I've looked for it, too, for years. It hasn't come to me. Maisie, the whole thing, luck, stock and barrel, isn't worth one of the hours I spent with you by Fort Keeling. You're alone now, and I'm alone. What's the use of worrying? Come to me instead, darling. Oh, no, Dick. I've got my work to do, and you have yours. We'll do it together. I couldn't. It's my work. You promised to remember. I remember, just as well as you do. But we were babies then. We didn't know what was before us. Well, suppose I go away and wait for a while. I don't want you to go away. You could help me with my work. All right. But don't forget, Maisie. I love you, and no brother and sister business either. I knew you wouldn't understand. Look at my face and tell me what you see. Well, it's the same Maisie, and it's the same me. And we've both nice little wills of our own. And one or the other of us has to be broken. Perhaps with enough Sundays... A I... month of them won't alter things. <laughs> Perhaps two months. Ah, the great artist has arrived. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, the nil guy, back again. And how are the Balkans and all the little Balkans? One side of your face out of drawing, as usual. No, well, never mind about that. There'll be trouble in the Balkans in the spring. What brings you to London? The same thing about all correspondence, a serious shortage of wars. Where did I see Eula? At Suarkeen, ah. right after a camel had bitten me. No, 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 you bit the camel. I drew it. He bit me first. I hear you've been lucky. Well, if you mean the British public has tardily recognized my genius, yes. It's of common report you're suffering from a swelled head. Pinky, go over there and bite that fat man. Stand off, you enlarged rat. <laughs> Better stay away from him, Binky. He's a bad man. If he'll bite a camel, he'll bite you. Ah. Now, um, about your head. I soak it every morning in hot water, but it won't go down. Well, I've been commissioned to soak you in print. Torpenhow refuses to, out of false delicacy. I've been overhauling these pot boilers in your studio. They're disgraceful. Oh, so that's it, is it? The first part deals only with the pictures. Here's the end. For work done without conviction, for power wasted on trivialities, for labor expended with levity, for the deliberate purpose of winning the easy applause of a fashion-driven public. It couldn't be Torpenhow who set you barking at me, could it? Public, there remains but one end, the oblivion that is preceded by toleration and cenotaphed with contempt. <laughs> From this fate, Mr. Heldar has yet to prove himself out of danger. Mm, a clumsy ending, but, but very true. Pinky, the public thirst for blood must be gratified. But you see, they have no arenas now, so they have war correspondence. Nil Guy is just a fat gladiator who pops up through trap holes and talks of what he's seen. You're no better than an energetic bishop, an affable actress, or... or myself. If it were worth my while, I'd caricature you in every newspaper, biting a camel, or worse. I hadn't thought of that. As it is, I'll give your writings to the only audience who can appreciate them. Here, thank you. Go home, Nil Guy, to your lonely little bed. Where are you going, Dick? I go to grapple with a serious crisis. What can you do with a man like that? Leave him alone. He's as mad as a hatter. Women and dogs. They can't resist him. He stole one away from me once in Cairo. I haven't forgiven him yet. Woman or dog? Huh? Oh, well, it was a long time ago. I don't remember. Hello. 
Hello. I was hoping you'd come this Sunday. Ah. I need your help so badly. Oh. Dick, you shouldn't have brought all these artists' things. But I wanted to. Well, I... I really don't need them. Or me. Oh, I need you, Dick. Please sit down. Have some tea? Never want any of it again as long as I live. Sunday after Sunday here, I've swilled the stuff until my stomach is coated with a layer of tea leaves. You don't have to come here if you don't want to. That's what I tell myself. But I always come back. Would it help if I forbade you to come? Give me some tea. for the day. Um, oh. oh, what's that? Melancholia. I took it from a book. Well, that's bad to begin with. It's from The City of Dreadful Night. Remember? And all her sorrow shall be turned to labor. Has been done already by Dürer. And she might as well try and rewrite Hamlet. She was a woman. She suffered a great deal. Till she could suffer no more. Then she began to laugh at it all. I'll paint her beautifully and send her up to the salon. Look, I'll take the same subject, so if I can't do a better head oh, than you... Oh, all your things smell of tobacco and blood. <laughs> anyway, I want to talk about my picture. Tell me what to do with that chin. Well, you're weak in drawing. You, you foreshorten. Oh, there's something grim and Dutch about your work that I like, but... Why not spend some time on line alone? I don't care for pure line. I know. You You want to do your fancy heads with a bunch of flowers at the base of the neck to hide bad modeling. And cattle knee-deep in grass to hide bad drawing. In other words, my ability is much less than my ambition. No, no. You, you have the gift of color. But with line, you must go backwards or forwards. And it'll show up your weaknesses. Which, according to you, are many. Well, you've got to... I don't know. It's... If I had a brush in my hand, perhaps... Maisie, all you want is success. If you had that, you'd have more time for me, wouldn't you? Yes, I suppose I would. Well, then, why not let me do some pictures and you... you sign them? Oh, that's childish. It's got to be my work, I tell you. Mine, mine, mine. All right, then it shall be. Yours, yours. Yours. I'd better not interfere. Well, Vicky, my lad, did you catch any cats today or defraud any butchers? No. Had a quiet day with the gentleman on the couch, eh? Do any work today? No. Never work anymore, do you? Very rarely. Aren't you afraid of losing your hand? Perhaps. What's the matter? Liver out of order? No. Dick, it's none of my business, but what do you do every Sunday nowadays? I haven't seen you for the last five in a row. Well, it's none of your business, but I go out and see the flowers. And watch the pretty ships go by. Sounds good. Suppose I try it with you this coming Sunday. Well, I'm sorry, Tort, but it's sort of, you know, a one-man business. I see. Who's the girl, Dick? If you're going to start talking like that, I'll rent a red brick studio with white paint trimmings and begonias and petunias and potted palms. And I'll invite every woman in London interested in art over. And you can receive them in a velvet coat and an orange tie. And no trousers on. It's too thin, Dick. You overdid it. All right. I overdid it. What's the matter? Did you burn yourself? It was the glare of that match. Like a hot iron. I suppose I'd better stop sitting around in darkness. Especially the darkness of your own mind.
for Mama were only here. <sighs> Maisie, doesn't it make any difference, all this? No. I'd tell you if it did, but it doesn't. Do I... Does this talking about it for you? <laughs> of course not. You must forgive a man when he's in love. <laughs> he's always a nuisance. You must have known that. Well, there were other men, of course. Did you listen to them? At first, because they praised my pictures and I thought they meant it. Poor Maisie. Oh, it's easy for you. You've succeeded and you've plenty of pennies. Well, never enough. I'll always be threepence short in my accounts. Why threepence? I carried a man's bag once from Liverpool Street to Blackfriars Bridge. And it was a sixpenny job. Oh, you needn't laugh. Indeed it was. And I needed the money desperately. And he only gave me threepence. He never had the decency to pay in silver. Whatever money I make, I'll never get that odd threepence out of the world. Here, Dick. <laughs> Are you paid? A thousand times and we'll close the account. But, Maisie, you're going at it the wrong way. For success, I mean. Painting is seeing and then remembering better than you saw. You haven't seen yet. Maisie, come with me. Come across the sea and be happy. I know so many places. Islands tucked away under the line. You reach them after weeks of crashing through water black as marble. And then you see the sun rise, almost afraid because the sea is so lonely. Who's afraid? You or the sun? The sun, of course. And you find your island. Alive with hot, moist orchids that make mouths at you and do everything but talk. There's a waterfall 300 feet high, like a sliver of green jade laced with silver. And millions of wild bees live up in the rocks. And an ivory white servant will sling you a long yellow hammock. And you put your feet up and hear the bees hum and listen to the falling water until you fall asleep. Can one work there? Certainly. You hang your canvas in a palm tree and let the parrots criticize. I don't like that place. Sounds lazy. I'll show you others. All kinds, all colors. Bazaars teeming with life. Jeweled peacocks, dead cities, honey-colored sands. See for yourself what color really means. Maisie, the world doesn't care your life or mine for pictures or anything else but doing its own work and making love. Come across the sea and be happy. What's that? Sounds like a heart beating. Probably. There she is. Four masts and three funnels. That must be the the Barralong to Australia. She'll lift the Southern Cross in a week. Oh, you lucky old tub, you lucky old tub. Let's go, Dick. I'm getting cold. All right. Look. Here's a little heathen prayer to fate, which you won't believe in, but it might help. Allah be merciful, and if any evil befall, let me bear the burden and let her go unscathed. And here is my dearest possession, a sacrifice. The fates will surely be bribed this once. Dick, I'm going back to Paris. Because of... Because of you. You're the finest man I know, and the best friend I have. I'm awfully fond of you, and I need you, but, well, there's a limit to the selfishness of Maisie. Oh, Dick, uh, will you come here? moment my back's turned. Uh, she fainted on the pavement. Not drink. Hunger. I, I couldn't leave her there. Barmaid, probably. London edition. Why didn't you turn her over to a policeman? Well, I haven't your ice water in my veins, so I brought her up here and gave her your dinner. Oh. And what happened to your dinner? Greedy. <laughs> Feeling better? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. There aren't many gentlemen as kind as you are. Turn your face to the light. 
No, no, to the light. Picture. My melancholia. Marvelous eyes. Terror in them. Futility. Sorrow. Yes, the eyes have it. Now, keep your chin up. Don't let him hit me, sir. Please don't. Don't be afraid. He's not going to hit you. He's an artist. They're all mad. Do you know what artists do? Well, they... They draw things on the pavement. <laughs> That's right. I haven't risen to that yet, though. I want to draw your head. What for? Because it's pretty. That's why I'm willing to pay you three quid a week just for sitting still and being drawn. Here's a quid on account. For nothing? Aren't you afraid I'll cheat you? I'm sure you will. What's your name? Bessie. Bessie. It's no use giving the rest. Bessie broke. Stonebrook, if you like. What's yours? Oh, you don't need to give the real ones. No one ever does. Uh, mine's Torpenow. Mine's Elder. Those are the real ones. By the way, Bessie, when you come tomorrow, don't bother to wear that paint on your face. I've got all the colors we'll need. You know too much about women, Mr. Finkel. There isn't a gentleman in the whole world as kind as you are. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, melancholia thing new? You talk. Are you really the kindest gentleman in the whole world? If you are, why are you never kind to me? I don't know. Mr. Eldar, do you have a girl? No. No, I haven't. Does Mr. Topinow? <laughs> I, I don't allow him to. making fun of me. I'm not making fun. I'm very serious about that. Well, I'm only trying to help. Yourself, you have. He's beginning to look at you, isn't he? That's the first step, isn't it? Oh, that's enough today. Light's getting bad. It's still good. I'm not tired. Well, I am. I suppose Mr. Torpenow will be along any minute now. I'll see you tomorrow at 11. Goodbye. Could I make you some tea? You could, but you'd be risking your life if you did. You don't think much of me, do you? A great deal, but not much.
Let's see if Top's around. Mr. Torpenow, couldn't, couldn't you let me stay here? But it's no use, Bessie. I'm liable to be ordered off anywhere at a moment's notice if a war breaks out. Well, until you go, then. I ain't asking for anything. And you don't know how good I can cook. Well, I'll... I'll think about it. Top, will you come here a moment? What right have you to interfere? I oughtn't to have seen her moving about in these rooms as if they belonged to her. That's what upset me. It gives a lonely man a sort of a hankering, doesn't it? It does. Hello! Anybody working these diggings? Studio! My, what cheerful, shining faces. Has Torp's little dicky been bad again and caused Mother to worry? Worse than that. Torp has female trouble. Really? May I ask where? The usual place. Mind if I have a look? Thank you. Makes it almost unanimous. I always say that if you think you can do better, wait. <laughs> you waited too long. We're considering your case tonight. What do we do first? Get rid of her. Torp does that. Tell her, little man, that you have to go in conference with your friends about the size of your dowry. And that we'll have the matter settled in a year. Might as well run along, Bessie. I, I, uh, I. Uh... You mean you, you don't want me to stay then? I'm afraid not. You're so kind, Mr. Torpenow. You even throw me out, nice like. Goodbye, Bessie. Goodbye, Mr. Torpenow. take a nice little walk with an old guy. To the dockyards to see the troop ships. To Aldershot to see the pretty soldiers. To the arsenal to see the great big cannons. I suppose you're right. 
I'll put a few things together. I thought she wasn't immoral. I was wrong. She said she could cook. You sent him away. I know you did. Uh, keep your head up, will you? Mr. Eldar, please tell me. Yes, I sent him away. You can't take him away from me. I'll... Please, if you don't mind, I think we'd better get on with the picture. Picture? Picture? What do I care about your picture? I hate you, do you understand? I hate you. You telling him what to do. He's a better man than you'll ever be. You ain't fit to be in the same room with him. I know. I would have stayed and made love to you. Someday I'll get even with you. Mark my words. I can't do any more. Got an headache again? I hope it splits your skull. Thank you. I think Eva will go to a medicine man. Is interfered with. But by these we get our bread and mutton chop bones for little dogs. Come on. Where did you get them? In the Sudan. The scars your trouble. The frontal bone is damaged causing severe pressure on the optic nerve. I would advise utmost caution and the avoidance of any mental anxiety. My business is painting and I have no time to lose. What's the verdict? The symptoms you're experiencing are the beginning of complete degeneration. Under such conditions, little can be done. As far as I can gather, you say it's decay of the optic nerve and... and hopeless. How long have I got if I avoid all strain and worry? About a year. And if I don't take care of myself? Not very long. You don't mind if I just sit here for a moment? Yes. Very good to tell me the truth. Thanks. Mr. Biggs? We've got it badly, little dog. Just as badly as we can get it. Rembrandt. Gardner has joined us and we have found our war. Get ready to go back to the Sudan. 
We'll be home in three weeks. Talk. Well, I can't take him off his trip to sit down and sympathize with me, can I, Pinky? Anyway, all the... All the top and house in the world can't save me. Isn't that right? We must be calm, Binky. This isn't nice at all. What should we do? Do something. Time is short. Binky, where was Moses when the light went out, huh? Soldiers, Binky. Death comes home too nearly. And this is battle and murder both for me. <laughs> and you're no good either. Now. No good at all. Help me through my time of waiting. And I won't whine when my punishment comes. Biggie, that picture's all nonsense. Now, there shall be Maisie in that head because I'll never get Maisie. And Bessie, of course, because she knows all about melancholia. No, she doesn't know she knows. And she shall laugh right out of the canvas. And every man and woman that ever had a sorrow of his own shall, shall feel a stir of fellowship in all disastrous fight. That's it. That's better than painting the thing nearly to peak Maisie. I can do it now because I have it inside me. Now! Beaton! Beaton! Sir? You know that girl who works for me, Bessie? Yes, sir. Go and get her. Yes, sir. Hurry. Hurry. Hurry, Binky. Before the light goes. Please with yourself today, aren't you? As punch. You're drunk again. As a lord. You've been drunk for a week. Go on, get up in your chair, quick. I can hardly stand being near you. <laughs> Quite a come down for a lady, isn't it? Uh-oh. 
This will never do. That doctor's a liar. What? Nothing. Now throw back your head and laugh. I won't. I've had enough of that foolishness. Come on, Bessie, throw back your head and laugh. Laugh, you little... I won't. Laugh, Bessie, laugh. I can't laugh, I can't. I'm going to get it out of you if I have to tear it out. Look, it's good. It's so good I couldn't do it very often because I'd consider myself the equal of God and refuse to die at my appointed time. Why, you little fool, I'm giving you something you never had before, a soul, a soul on canvas. I'm making you immortal. A hundred years from now, they'll be looking at you when you're dust and water and a whisper of the wind saying, that is sorrow, that is every sorrow, that sorrow is so deep, it's, it's laughter. Come on, Bessie, throw your head back and laugh. Come on, laugh, Bessie, laugh! <laughs> 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 work you ever saw. I'm drunk and everything's blurred and there's no more hope, but it's good work. It's great work. Can't I go away for a few weeks without you getting yourself into fresh trouble? I'm disgusted with you. You're right, but I'm right too. After you went away, I had some trouble with my eyes, so I went to an oculist and he turned a, you know, a thing into him. And he said, scar on head, sword cut, optic nerve, so I'm going blind, but I had some work to do before going blind, and I've done it, and it's good. Oh, I've had a lot to drink, though. I can't see much now, but I can see much better when I'm drunk. And, oh, I'm glad to see you talk. Dick. Dick. No, no, don't. Don't say it. Don't. Look. Look at the picture. What a face. Isn't she good? Isn't she a beauty? I've been down to hell to get her, but isn't she worth it? Where did you get the eyes? They don't belong to Bessie. No, oh, they're someone else's, but isn't it thundering good? Allah Almighty, what couldn't I do in ten years if I could do this now? Amen. She's a beauty. I can feel it. So will every man who is in his sorrow of his own. He shall see his trouble there, and by the Lord Harry, just when he's feeling sorry for himself, he'll throw back his head and laugh, just as she's laughing. I think I'll get to bed. Give Bessie 36 quid and three quid over for luck, will you? Uh, and cover the picture. Talk to me anymore. Here's uh, 39 quid from Dick Bessie. Good luck. Mr. Torpenow, 
Don't let him take you away from me again. Don't be a little fool, Bessie. Goodbye. Beaton! Beaton! Yes, sir? Keep an eye on him, Larry Buck. We've got about a thousand eye doctors coming up to see him. What's the matter with you? I'm thinking about killing a woman. A woman named Bessie. I was going to kill a woman once. Never got as far as doing it, though. That one chick of yours is becoming a nuisance. I can't stand heavy drinking in any man. He's drinking because he's going blind from the sword cut he got in the square at Abu Hamid. For me. Oh. Where are you going? Me? Oh. I'm going out to get drunk. Dark, I tell you. Top, old man, don't go away. Light the lamp. Did you light it, Top? Yes, Dick. I can't see, do you understand? Don't leave me. You wouldn't leave me alone now, would you? It's black. Quite black. I feel as if I were falling through it all. Steady does it. Yes, that's better. Now, don't talk. If I keep very quiet for a while, this darkness will lift. It's just on the point of breaking. Lie down. You feel better in the morning. I won't. My God, I'm blind. I'm blind and the darkness won't go away. Steady, Dick, steady. Lie down. Yes, we, it's all right. We 
mustn't let them think we're afraid of them, must we? All the powers of darkness and that lot. I don't. I don't think. One of the ten plagues of Egypt. Would you mind letting me hold on to you? One drop through the dark so. When we go, go, go away from here, our treasures will weep and they will wail. Our absence must refrain when they find the grief is getting out of England by the Julius in the mail. When we go, go, go away from here, all the ladies will weep and they will wail. Our absence must refrain when they find the grief is getting out of England by the Julius in the mail. <laughs> Why? Since when did this place become respectable? Dick. You put him to bed, didn't you? Yes, but I can't guarantee he'll sleep through this bombardment. Torb, have you signed your contract with the Central Southern Syndicate yet? No, I'm not going. You're a fool. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but uh, Gardner's right. Torp's a fool. He's the best man among you, and he's going with you. Do you hear me, Torp? Yes, I hear you, Dick. Sit down. No, thanks. Who's taking my place? Barton, yeah. Oh, Barton. Well, lots of luck. Thank you, sir. It's his first outing. Give him some tips, Dick. I'll give you one tip. If you happen to get cut over the head in a fight, don't try to duck. Tell the man to keep on cutting. You'll find it cheapest in the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for letting me look in. What about that girl of Dick's? Her name is Maisie, and she paints. She's at Vitry, and he's known her since childhood. I've often thought, when I've seen men die out in the desert, that if the news could be sent through the world, and the means of transportation were quick enough, there'd be one woman at least at each man's bedside. Okay, did you swallow them? Oh, Torp, is that you? Where have you been? I'm tired of falling down. I thought I'd crawl around for a little. Is that you, Torp? No. It's only me. Hmm. A new phenomenon. Hearing voices now. What are you doing here? I... I came to see you. Well, you see, I had a little bother with my eyes. Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't write. Who told you about me? Mr. Torpenhoff. Well, believe me, I never meant you to know anything about this. Won't you... won't you sit down? Thank you. I, I, I wish I could offer you some tea. Perhaps I could make it for you. Oh, no, no, not for me, thank you. I'm sorry, I... I forgot. I hope you're not crying. It's far beyond that. I imagine it would be, looking at me now. Oh, Dick, you mustn't say things like that. Why not? Have things changed since the last time? Of course they have. I've changed, that's all. Dick, I'm so sorry. I've come to tell you that I want to... No, no, to... no, no, don't. Maisie, don't. I'm not a child.
Well, you came and you've seen, and I'm really very grateful. Nick, I want to stay. I came to stay. That desperately? To join me in my prison? Yes. I won't sentence you, Maisie. You're pardoned. Tell me only one thing, honestly. Honestly, so that I know I'm not making another mistake. Don't you feel relieved? I'm sorry. Oh, Dick, don't hate oh. me. I hate you. Now, don't cry. Don't cry. You're quite right. By the way, you, you haven't seen my melancholia. I just had time to finish it before all this happened. <laughs> Even Torfenhauer thinks it's good. There she is. What do you think of her? It's magnificent. It's wonderful. Is it that good? I can't believe it. Do you see what I meant now about flesh and shadow and line and all that? Stick to line, Maisie. I see. You're in it too. Don't you see yourself? Yes, I see myself. And all my futility. Yeah, I think you've looked at it long enough. It's not a thing you can look at too long. It seems to strike everybody that way. Maisie, you were very good to come. But don't you think you'd better go now? May I come back again? Perhaps when I'm very old, you can come back and tell me if the world has changed. May I kiss you goodbye, Dick? You're not crying. I can't have that. No, not a bit. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dick. Anything I can do? Yes, you can. You can give me my pipe. It's on the mantelpiece. Bye, Dick. Goodbye, Maisie. Thank you. We should have asked her for the matches while we were about it. Are you alone, Dick? Yes, come in. I hope you didn't mind my leaving so suddenly. I understand now. Did you enjoy your trip to the continent? I don't know yet. Thanks, Doc. Did, uh, did it come out all right? Oh, yes. Yes, fine. Well, tell me about it. Where is she now? Well, she's out taking care of a few things. Talk, you mustn't stay here on my account. I don't need you now. Then it's all settled. Yes. Yes, it's all settled. I'm awfully glad, Dick. Thanks. Every man needs a wife. Only after he divorces his Torbenhau. When are you leaving? The troop ship is sailing tonight, but I'm staying here for the wedding. Oh, no, you're not. No, I, I'm not going to have you kissing the bride. <laughs> now, you can do that when you come back. Would you mind, Dick? Taking the boat tonight would save me three days to Brindisi. I just want to get you out of here. Want to help me pack? No, thanks. I'll stay here with Binky. If I get my hands on some of that field equipment, I might want to go with you. You don't talk much like a newly engaged man. Oh, I have a lot of life to forget. By the way, talk. 
she liked the picture. You've got a good girl, Dick. He's smelling the powder smoke already. It's gorgeous. What would I give to see the pretty soldiers? Come on, come on, you fellas. The boat is sailing. Oh. Goodbye, old man. Gardner, goodbye. Good luck. Dicky, I'm going to miss you out there. Don't let the campaign thin you down, fat man. You keep on worshipping your god. I'll take good care of Mr. Binkle. And don't get yourself shot. I want to hear some of your thumping lies when you get back. Right. God love you, Dicky. Goodbye. Goodbye, Torp. Goodbye, Beaton. Deliver him in good shape to his bride, or I'll kill you when I come back. I'll do my best, sir. Come on, Torp. <laughs> Now let, let's get on. The boat ain't left yet. I know it. Home, Cappy. I often think about you, Mr. Elder. Well, that's very flattering. Begging your pardon, sir, but ain't anything going to happen? It ain't my regular business, but before Mr. Torpenow went away, he gave me to understand, sir, that you might be moving into a house of your own, so to speak. A sort of house with rooms upstairs and downstairs, sir, where you get better attention. Probably thinking of a lunatic asylum. No, I'm not ready for that yet. No, it was hardly a lunatic asylum that is in my mind, sir. It was a matter of wedding bells like. Oh, I'm sorry, Beaton. No wedding bells like. Now, my idea of an outing, Mr. Elder, is a picnic on the grass in the park. Unless I'm mistaken, walking towards us is a young woman who used to come up to your rooms to be drawed. What, Bessie? Stop her. I'd like to speak to her. Wasn't you Mr. Elder's model? Why, uh, why, yes. He wants to see you. What for? I don't know. He's most particular blind. Drunk? No. Hospital blind. He can't see you. Oh. All right, I'll speak to him. Hello, Mr. Eldar. Oh, Bessie. I, uh, I hope you're well. I'm very well, thank you. And I'm glad to see you again. What are you doing now? Nothing much. I'm not doing much either. Won't you come and see me some afternoon? What for? Just a visit. You, you aren't angry with me? <laughs> angry with you? Why should I be? All right, I'll, I'll come tomorrow. Good. Goodbye, Mr. Eldell. Goodbye. All right, Beaton, let's go home. Well, if money can buy her to look after me, she shall be bought. Oh, I know we're falling pretty low, Mr. Binkle. But as a poor man to get nothing out of life but three meals a day and a greasy waistcoat. Come in. Here's Bessie Brooks. Oh, come in, Bessie. You may go, Beaton. Oh, Bessie. Won't you sit down? without spoiling my clothes. What a mess this place is in. The dust is just awful. Uh, how long have you been like this? Oh, ever since the day you left here. Where's, uh, where's Mr. Torpenow now? Oh, he went away, to the desert. Where's that? East, out of the mouth of the river. 
then west, then south, then east, all along the underside of Europe, then south again to the ends of the world. It's an awful long way. Bessie, I'm very glad to have found you again. Tell me about yourself. Never mind about me. What made you go blind so sudden? Oh, I was cut across the head a long time ago. Mr. Eldar, you're a mess. You may be as blind as a barn door, but it don't excuse you looking like a sweep. Do I look like a sweep, then? Oh, I'm sorry for you. I'm that sorry for you. Imagine me kissing you. I know. But I'll make it worth your while. You'd better come and keep house for me, Bessie. Oh, I, I couldn't do it here. Well, we'll go somewhere else. Well, I don't know as I care to earn a living for both of us. Here. See what my bank book says. Four thousand, two hundred and ten pounds, nine shillings and a penny. My. Well, that's enough for us to move on. We'll take an inventory before we go. I'm sure that Beaton's been taking things. Oh, never mind that. Let him have them. All I'd like to take away is that picture that I used you for. Oh, I... I wouldn't worry about the picture if I was you. Might have to sell it one day. May mean a matter of several hundred pounds. Several hundred pounds? We'll get rid of everything and make a fresh start. Shall we, Bess? Well, I... I'm very sorry, but you remember I was... I was angry with you after Mr. Torpenhout went away. Yes, you were very angry. But I think you had some right to be. Well, then I... But aren't you sure Mr. Torpenhout didn't tell you? Tell me what? Now, why make such a fuss when you could be giving me another kiss? Well, I... I was so angry I spoiled the picture with turpentine and paint. You aren't angry with me, are you? Say that again. I rubbed it out with turps and the knife. I only thought you'd have to do it over again. Isn't there anything left of the thing? N nothing that looks like much. I didn't know you'd take on about it. You aren't going to whip me, are you? Hit you, yes, very likely. I don't know. Let's think. for Maisie's. She must have thought me mad. Why did you do it? Because I was that angry. I'm not angry now. I'm awful sorry. Great heavens, to think that a little piece of nothing like you should throw me out of my stride. I ate a little piece of nothing, and you've no right to call me that. I did it because I hated you. And I, I'm only sorry now because... Well, because you... I know, I know. Don't cry. No, I ain't a little piece of nothing. No, no, no. Be quiet for just a minute. You didn't know what you were doing. And you don't know what you've done now. Top would understand. And I saved him from you. What presumption, what arrogance. And just now, I was going to. Oh, how it serves me right. The Lord is a just and a terrible God, Bess. Did you ever go to Sunday school? What are you talking about? Strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. And let me die for the first time. Now you're making fun of me. No, I'm not, but I'm going to give you 50 pounds for spoiling a good picture, and that'll keep you in pretty frocks for a long time. Well, aren't we going away together? Well, not exactly, but after we finish packing here, you're going to take me to the bank, to the steamship offices, and see me off at the pier. And if I don't? And if you don't, a man named Beaton will get you 50 pounds. Mr. Eldar, where are you going? East. Out of the mouth of the river, then west, then south, then east again, all along the underside of Europe, then south again to the end of the world. Oh, it's good to be alive again. Well, it's the same life, isn't it? The same. No better. No worse. Skidam. Monsieur Vina and I used to drink this together. He has had his last drink. 
to Monsieur Binard, who mixed his colors with gin. I had a talk with George. He's going to take you into the desert. Why do you want to go where they are fighting? My friend is there. Your friend. Your friend is dead, then. Celeste? Yes? This is for good morning, Monsieur de... The amount of kissing lately has been scandalous. The nil guy will be doing it next. <laughs> but I'm a discreet age, eh? Here is George. He will take you to your friend. How do you do, George? How do you do, sir? Now. now, how do I look, Celeste? Everything must be correct. All correct. Correct as the first day I ever saw you. Good. Now, Bing. Goodbye, Bing. Will you keep him until a man named Torpenhow calls for him? You'll know him by his knobbly knees. Yes, monsieur. Show. War correspondent, Central Southern Syndicate. Had a touch of ophthalmia and can't see very well. I had a touch of it myself. It's as bad as being blind. Yes, so I find it. Stations! There's a great improvement on shooting Fuzzy Wuzzy in the open. Oh, he's still unimpressed. We always have at least one demonstration against the night train from the happy children of the desert. Yes, sir. Powder smoke stinks. Perfume. I found the column. What luck. What stupendous and imperial luck, and it's just before the battle, Mother. Come on. Charge. Yes, yes, come, get down. Now, Tom, put me in it. Put me in it. Put him in it, Tom. Nilgai, God has been very good. He's dead. <laughs> 